welcome back to Mads World. I'm your host, Mads, and I hope you've been enjoying the show so far. If you have, please remember to subscribe, rate, review on Apple, Spotify, or whatever your favorite listening platform is, as it's the simplest way to help out the show. Or find me on social and tell all your friends about it. This week, I'm joined by London-based writer and comedian, Rosalie Minnett. Rosalie is an alumnus of the award-winning sketch comedy group, The Durham Review, the Soho Comedy Labs, and is currently training in improv at the Free Association in London. She's a member of the Vault Festival Young Company and won the Hello Grads Writing Award in 2020. She's written for Funny Women, Times Higher Education, and her writing has been featured on BBC Radio and CBBC. She's also recently taken her debut character comedy show, Clementine, up the Edinburgh Fringe this year. In this episode, we discuss the unique challenges and joys of female friendships, how comedy plays a role in our friendships, female friendship tropes in pop culture, life lessons from our female friends, what we can learn about ourselves through friendship, and how female relationships have changed throughout history. Hello, Rosalie. Hey, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. I'm glad that we got all the tech stuff. I'm like, like relaxed. <laughs> We can relax now and just enjoy. Um, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. I actually love having comedians on the pod because I feel like you guys just know how to be funny somehow. <laughs> like, that's your job. It's the famous last words. I'm <laughs> like, oh, God. What? <laughs> I feel like all of the funny has been taken out of me and I'm like, I've got nothing left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the going through those tech issues has just drained you. Um, yes. Let's <laughs> let's get stuck into our speed date question round so everyone listening can learn a bit more about you so my first question for you is and this is my favorite question I say this about every question though what is your favorite pop culture moment of all time okay so I actually think so I was thinking about this and I I know this is quick fire so I don't want to take too long on it but I one of my favorite pop culture moments was the Adele Dazeem thing please explain the Adele Dazeem controversy for everyone listening because I don't know what it is have you never heard of it? Oh my god. Okay, so it was basically like an Oscar or Glo- Golden Globe moment where like John Travolta accepted a an award that was meant to be for um, Idina Menzel. That's it. And she oh, ba- yeah. basically called her Adele Dazeem. And I just I I know it's like a cl- it's a classic, and I but I still <laughs> think it's so funny. Like I every time I like it gets brought up, I'm like. Oh my god, I actually do know exactly what you're talking about with John Travolta. Uh, he's like reading out like the top five like nominees or whatever, and then the last one he just goes, Adele Dazeem. And everyone's like, who is that? And they just Adele show Dazeem. Adina Men- Menzel or whatever her name is on the screen, and everyone's like, um, what? <laughs> my next question for you is... Tell me all about your mishap involving a props order because you told me to ask about this and I'm really excited to hear this story because I have no idea where this is going to go. <laughs> so basically I like I use loads of Sylvanian families in my props which are those like little little toys like so I don't know why I started using them I think it was actually because originally my mum was trying to like clear loads of stuff at my house and then she was like you need to get rid of your toys as a kid like you're never going to use these again and I was like I will and she was like when are you going use these toys and I was like I will and she was like if you use them in the next year I won't throw them away and so I was like fine I'm gonna use them so I basically just decided to like incorporate it into my show and then I got like more and more and more and they're like really expensive so I was like and I kept on losing them every time I did a gig so I was like right I need more so I went I was like I took to eBay and I was like I was like bidding and I was get, getting it, like you know all of these like really intense bids with like people in, in like all over the world like I I was like constantly watching my email and I won this like massive bid it was like super cheap for like all of these Sylvanian families there was like 70 of them and I like I was like amazing one ordered all fine and then basically they ended up going to my ex-boyfriend's grandparents house by accident because weirdly that was the address that was like attached to my old eBay account and so then I was like I had was in a situation where I had sent like over a hundred Sylvanian families in a box just to their <laughs> house and um I actually never got I never got any like conclusion to it so but I do think that if you didn't know what that was like that is an absolute hate crime to like open up a box in your like if you like can you imagine if you just received that you'd be like oh my god I'm someone's someone's come for me so for anyone listening that doesn't know these Sylvanian families are like tiny little animals aren't they they're like little like cats and bunnies and dogs but they're like baby little tiny ones and they like use them on tiktok to make weird little 
soap bits. operas or something is yeah. that the vibe yeah they're like weird little I think I feel like they're kind of weird like Victorian-esque like woodland creatures although I saw this <laughs> hilarious thing on Twitter which was like it was like a picture of a Slovenian family in like a carriage and like there was a horse dragging them and they were like what's the law of these because like if the horse is like the horse is carrying the Slovenians like what's allowed to be like in clothing and what's not and so like it, it just like blew the whole world wide open it reminds me of how goofy is in clothes but then goofy has a dog and you're like what i think it's so funny when people like realize these little strange like problems like my friend came into my room the other day and she was like it's so weird that winnie the pooh doesn't have any trousers He's just free balling, like he's just got a top on. He's yeah, he's literally free balling. He's just got a little crop, little little pink, like a little red crop. It's so brave. His little crop. <laughs> I feel like I walk around the house like Winnie the Pooh, and like that's how I go to bed. I go to bed <laughs> yeah, like in a Winnie little t shirt and just nothing else. Yeah. And then if I go to the bathroom in the night, I <laughs> race to the toilet. I've got housemates, and I'm racing <laughs> to the toilet like no pants on, just a top. But I'm like, I'm being Winnie the Pooh right now. Yeah. Like- <laughs> I love that as a phrase though like I think that should just now be accepted as like you are like you're just it's like you're Winnie the Pooh look and every time I do it now I think about it I think it's so funny I find it really funny when boys do it and like you've just slept with a boy or something and they're standing there in a little t-shirt with their just their legs out and then their feet are just like a right angle to their leg and I get the ick from that so bad like they're there in like a t-shirt and you can see like their little tiny bum and like their little chicken leg. Oh, <laughs> I can't. It's too much. <laughs> is that like your biggest ick? Yeah, just realizing that feet are like, I don't think perpendicular is the right word, but they're like a right angle to the leg. And then there's just like a man coming out. Of, I don't know. It's so hard to explain, but I don't like it. <laughs> I would love to know the funniest DM that you've ever received, either on a dating app or on Insta. Okay, so I was thinking about this one because, like, obviously your, like, Hinge is just, like, this insane graveyard for, like, pe- like g- ghosts of boys past. Absolutely. And, like, I, I feel like the weirdness starts when you give them your number. Yeah. And I've realised that, like, whilst I think that Hinge is a graveyard, I actually think that, like, my WhatsApps mm-hmm. are, like, where... And it just says, like, Harry Hinge, like, oh. you know guy like you just got all of these like kind of random guys that you were messaging Mm -hmm. and I would say that the weirdest one I ever got was like this guy who kept on saying that he'd like seen me around oh god which was actually quite like genuinely quite weird and he'd always be like oh I think I saw you the other day and the first time it happened I was like oh yeah like maybe like you live in the same area and I was like oh weird like yeah like where did you see me he's like oh you were like on the bridge and I was like yeah I was and I was like oh do you, you like live in the same area but then it happened like more than like a few times it was really weird and then I was like uh like he's oh yeah I think I saw you again like want to go for a drink and I'm like uh no like what like also just say hi like if you saw me like say hello if it's been that many times like Like, approach me especially if you want to go for a drink because it's like that's taking it from virtual to real life anyway so it's like if you want to go for that drink you're gonna need to have some sort of physical interface going on say hello yeah and also if you can't do that, then, like, it's clearly not going to work out. But then I had, like, another guy that did this. This is not the guy that said that he'd see me around, but there was another guy who lived, like, really, really close to me. And when I initially matched with him, I was, like, amazing. Like, this is easy access. And then I was, like, mm, don't really fancy it anymore. Turned out he lived, like, right, like, down the road from me. And every, like, I, I kept on seeing him, like, every single time I did a commute. So now I've had to change my entire, like, commute route because it's, like, too awkward because I, like, go Oh, him. my God. I see him, like, all the time. That's the worst because I feel like you spend a lot of time as well trying to get your commute to a really good point where you're like, okay, to ch- yeah. this bus, this time. And the central line gets me to work faster, but I'm doing Hammersmith and City because I like the aircon. I like to have a seat. So, like, I've really yeah. tested all of the possible options. So, if anyone – tested the water. Yeah, if anyone wants to disrupt my route, that's a big deal for me. <laughs> it's a huge deal. I, I feel like I've also – it's crazy because <laughs> – 
<laughs> when it comes to commuting as well, like I'm so much more of an ease girl over like a speed. And I've come to the realization that like, if I'm going to like not get a seat, like I'm happy to be like 10, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes late for work. If I'm just, I was like, well, just take my leisurely pace. I, I want it to be like, you know, civilized. Yeah. And like, I need to be able to read my book on the train in because I need to escape reality for a bit before I dive right into like a yes. day full of meetings. So if I can't sit yeah. and I'm reading a little life at the moment, I can't stand and read that because I'm holding it with one hand. It's just fucking huge. And I'm like, I can't do yeah. that. I need to sit and have yeah. it on my lap because it's like my space yeah and I'm like yeah okay I'm so with you and I think this new world allows for us to do that because flexibility is everything in a post-covid world just let me be who I want to (laughs) be do you find that sometimes you read on the tube just to like just for the aesthetic aesthetic or are you like reading I feel like now that I'm reading such a popular book I normally just don't I normally just don't really care but now that I'm reading a little life sometimes I'll like see people glancing at it and I know that they've been through the trauma and they they want to talk about it with me (laughs) and I'm like I'm like I'm not looking in your eyes because you're going to give me some sort of solemn nod that I'm not ready for yeah I don't want it (laughs) like yeah (laughs) I'm not ready and like when I used to read Game of Thrones like I read all of Game of Thrones a few years ago I would like purposely because I wanted to speak about Game of Thrones with someone on my long ass train so yes. I'd have it upright and be reading it and I was obviously reading it but then some someone would sit opposite you and be like oh my god did you watch last night's ever and I'd be like book down let's talk about it wait people would come up to you and talk to you about your book like strangers yeah well when it was Game of Thrones was like it's big in its that's prime crazy. yeah Game of Thrones is like a cultural phenomenon like I feel like I would talk to anyone about it but that's bad it. that that like I know people would just come up to you and be like oh my god like at least well yeah. I mean, it's kind of like a cautionary tale to make sure that you like look out for what you're reading because you definitely don't want to like attract I know and people. I read a lot of very sexual books thanks to the podcast <laughs> now because it's like Ooh. a you know dating relationship sex podcast so I get a lot of publishers sending me stuff and it'll be like vagina book or like whatever and I'm reading that and I'm just on the train like oh no (laughs) (laughs) up next is what is your funniest date story okay so you will love this one yes so I was I was like yeah I I actually I have to say which is really about you're not you're not gonna like this I don't actually go on a lot of dates because that's okay I find (laughs) mainly because of this experience but also I just like I hate dating like going on dates with people I don't like I don't know like the hinge of it all like stresses me out but this was like about a year ago I met a guy at a party and he was like he seemed like quite normal and he like asked a friend for my number and I was like fine and we were chatting and then he was like um what do you want to do like where do you want to go like do you want to get drinks and I made the mistake of being like oh surprise me oh no and he was like fine and I was like okay great so then he, he's like, meet me by the London Eye. And oh, I was like, okay. Bloody what hell. This? Like, not a great start. <laughs> then he like he's like there and like turns around and he's like, ta-da, we're going to the London Dungeon. Oh, now, God. bear in mind, <laughs> I had never like barely spoken to him. So like, it's <sighs> like, you can't really speak in there. Yeah. And don't people like jump out and they jump out and scare you yeah. and stuff. They're like full on actors in there. It's like really intense. And like, <laughs> it's so expensive. So he must have dropped like at least 80 pounds on those Shut tickets. Up. But really? it was also like, we had to go into these like weird, like as you were like queuing, you have to like give your bags. It's like such a, it's like such a, a logistical thing that it was weird that like we hadn't, we didn't know each other. And then people kept on, he kept on being picked out of the crowd to like interact with all the actors. And people were like looking at me like, <laughs> you know, as if I was like his long-term girlfriend. And I was like, I've literally just met him. Oh my I've God. literally just met him. The only time I would be into this is if they took me to the Shrek experience. Cause I just don't want to pay, but I really, I really want to go. <laughs> I was like, I actually would have been down for that. Yeah. Because I feel like, it's yeah, funny. I really want to go. I think it would be really funny. Yeah. But that was, it was just so strange. And it was like, oh God. It was, it was just so weird that like we couldn't speak and you just had to go around in silence. It was so strange. That's so weird. Because it's like, he probably thought when you said surprise me, he was like, oh, this girl is going to have the surprise yeah, of her she's life. Yeah, she's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I think what it is though is that like it's the ultimate like and it's, this is a bit harsh to him yeah but a bit like I don't know that 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 kind of thing there's like a certain type of guy who like that like quirky is their their personality but it's like it's like buying like 
you know, the little jumper. And it's like, look how funny and quirky. And it's like, but... There's a certain kind of guy that's like a rugby guy and they wear budgie smugglers and they think it's hilarious, but it's like... Now you're just yes. in budgie smugglers. I've I've yeah. smirked for maybe one second, and now I'm like, now what? Now what? Be funny. What's next? Like what? It's such what a now what? Yeah. What are you gonna do next? Like you're gonna wear a Greg's top and IKEA bucket hat? Like, yes. Stop. <laughs> just wear normal clothes. I feel like <laughs> it's the guys that have like unintentionally been like, like kind of designated as like the joker of the group and then like when they escape into real like life and society it's like they're that's what they that, that's what they do it feels so harsh but I've also like I've just come across so many guys who were like oh like no you do comedy and I'm like yeah and they're like oh I'm a bit of a joker myself and I'm like oh fuck are you though are you or are, are you, you just you? wearing like little shoes like oh dear <laughs> yeah there's so, there's always that certain person in the friendship group and it's like everyone expects it from them they know it but it's just it's like basic bitch but in male form it, there's got to be a word for it there's got to be a word for it somewhere like we've got to come up with some kind of like term for it is it is basic bitch it's like a basic jester the jester the court jester the court jester <laughs> Oh dear. Well, in speaking about comedy, I want to hear everything about your comedy show, Clementine, because you are going to Edinburgh Fringe and yeah, I've read all about your show and I'd love for you to just take me and my listeners through it. Oh, amazing. Well, thanks so much for asking me about it. I think it's like quite an apt show for your podcast because it's basically all about like finding love and like the one love it. um and I, I kind of started writing it over lockdown and then I went through like a breakup which is so classic and so like but it was quite I don't know like I think it's one of those moments in your life where you kind of have to sometimes if you go through something like that that I feel like you have to like channel it into something yeah and I yes kind of, yeah. I felt like I needed to like burn off all of this like Ang- like angst and emotion into something mm-hmm. and it was it was actually st- like when I look back at the show now because I started writing it like I started doing it last year like the first show I performed was in March of last year so I've done it like a ton of times yeah and I was actually reading through one of my old like like kind of diaries like you know these warning pages yeah that I was writing at the time today and it was like I don't know like I, I clearly had like so little faith in myself and yeah. so little like confidence and I didn't think like I don't know it was just really nice to look back and be like oh my god like you have to sometimes take stock and be like so on the like on the one hand like I love the show but it's more like what the show has also done for me and like what it represents yeah. it's like it was so much about like getting my my like sense like my voice back and like my sense of self and like getting it sounds so cheesy and like it's not usually the kind of thing that I would like necessarily like harp on about but I I actually think that today I had that realization that that's kind of what the show had been for me and like I'd it had been such a like profound shift in the way I thought about myself and in what I was capable of I guess yeah that's so cool and it's cool that as well like every time you perform it it must feel different and the like what you learn and everything because how many times have you performed it now I think you said like 10 Oh yeah, probably more than that actually, because I did uh, like a work in progress, yeah, for, like ten days last year in, in Edinburgh, and then I did like a, a couple of other festivals, um, and then I did like Vault Festival this year in London. Uh, so got I like probably like twenty times. Mad, yeah, and it must change every time and change like your your perception of it must change and your confidence must build so much every time you do it. So much, and I I think also what's nice about because when I first like set out to do it I was just like in my head I just want to put something on stage just do it once just to like to just have done it and one, one of the nice things about it when like if someone like doesn't like it or if I like you know if the review isn't like what I needed it to be like it's kind of nice because I didn't ever really set out to be like I want to make the best comedy show I was just like I want to make something that I would want to watch and like something that like performing it will bring me loads of joy and like yeah. um just that I don't know like I think also because at the end of the show like basically I won't give anything away but basically she's like trying to find the love of her life and then like she's kind of like a vague insane unhinged like regency woman and like initially it started out as like a regency woman and now she's just like an insane woman from like the past um and yeah she's just like generally from a time and she like finds out that she uh Lola is looking for love and her parents have only given her like two days or like a day to find someone because she, when she turns 27 she'll like they said that she's gonna be taken away if she doesn't find the love of her life so the stakes are high um 
and at the end of the show like it's kind of a bit more about like what love is I guess and like I didn't really ever set like set it up to be like emotional or anything because I was like I just want it to be silly and funny but then people came up to me after and was like oh I actually was so surprised at how like emotional I felt at the end of it and like I actually thought it was really nice that even though it's like, so silly and so stupid at the end of it you're like oh like that message actually really landed and it made me feel so um yeah like so joyous so that was that was nice and like I think I'm excited to find out when like with audiences in Edinburgh this month like how it kind of goes down and hopefully like more people like it I'd love to chat to you about and just have a bit of a discussion because I haven't actually spoken about female friendships on the podcast with anyone before. And I feel like they are quite, they're so unique and obviously the experience is different for everyone, but sometimes they can be challenging and they can teach you about yourself. And sometimes they might be the best loves of your lives that you find in your friendships and in yourself rather than through a romantic partner. And I know that you mentioned that you had an interest in that uh, as well prior to recording. So I'd love for you to chat to me about what do you think are some of the unique challenges and the unique joys of female friendships and what they have to offer I, I love this so much because I completely agree I think like people don't talk about it enough and I think like it's such a huge part of my life especially because I am single like it like those like the women in my life are the most important apart from my family you know like the most important people in my life like I don't really have I have a couple of male friends but the, the way that like those those friendships are so different and like I don't, I'm not I wouldn't say like not as deep but like there's just something so specific and so like I, like some of the women in my life I feel like I've got such an understanding with about like them knowing what I need without even having to say it like and as we get older and as we grow together and like mature as people I think those those relationships also change and those friendships change um and because I, I lived outside of the UK like I grew up in like lots of different countries so like friendships have always been like really important and interesting to me like it's it's I don't know if you've ever heard of like the term like third culture kid no but I'd love to hear about it because I'm living in England at the moment and yeah so you feel yeah a lot of my friends and my childhood friends and the people who know me the best and understand me the best even when I'm not acting like myself they're all live in another country but anyway continue yeah well that's that's a really big part of, of it like the the third culture kid thing is that like Mm -hmm. if you have like a parent from one place and a parent from another but you grew up in a different country so a lot of people that like were international school kids have that so I feel like I've had friendships basically like every time I've moved I've you know you kind of like reinvent yourself you I've taken like I've met new people and like made new friends and Mm -hmm. I've had to like um I almost feel like that part of me is almost frozen in time with those people and like now as I get older and I'm like seeing those friends again it's actually nice because we're all we're all actually starting to grow together so I've got like some friends who I made when I was at school in Brussels and now they live in London and we like I'm so happy that we're like still in touch and we're still like in each other's lives and it's so nice and I think also it's that thing that you said like th- those old friends like those are the people that know you the best like and often people that you probably might not be friends with now or like people that you're like quite different from but they like they know you so well and like they know when something's wrong and they know like you just can't really especially like with your female friends like they they do just know what's wrong and they like I value those ones so much. And what about some of the most important lessons that you've had from your female friends? Like just in regards to what have you learned about yourself? What have you learned about life? Like what do you think there is to learn from our female friendships? I think that you learn that you can't do stuff on your own. And I think sometimes as a woman as well, like you kind of like in this, you know, post girl boss era, like people are now starting to realise that like, you know, life isn't, all about like having to strive forward and stuff but I I think we're in like this really weird place in like feminism and expectations of women and like the thing that we're like most this is something that I was talking about with one of my friends recently actually like Mm -hmm. that we're most um kind of isolated as women like as single women you're so isolated like Mm. economically it's it's more expensive to be on your own and also like you know the idea of like the girl boss is like oh I can do it all on my own I can sacrifice everything Mm -hmm. and what really gets like swept away in that is like your female friendships and I feel like I want to like like push against that because you know we all live these like super insular lives now 
and if you're not in a relationship if you if you are single then you're like separated from your female friends but then some of them are in relationships so they're also their own islands which is like I don't know I feel like we've kind of lost that like really important community of women that like we like people used to have we used to like kind of de- depend on the, the women in their life so much and like I want to like get a commune of all my favorite people and like put them all together yeah. and like live like that and it feels like when you're watching something like sex in the city as well you think like oh before the internet there was so much connection and they spent so much time like obviously it's just a tv show and we can talk about like female friendship tropes and stuff in a in a sec that's one of my questions actually um but you see that and that but then you think like how realistic was that and also the community And the people that I've met through doing the podcast, the women I've met and the women I've learned from, whether it's about race or disability or sexuality or even just about, you know, even just having a laugh, it's like it's unmatched. Like there's so many communities online for all kinds of women, all kinds of people or just I just think it's so cool. I think people are so quick to hate on the Internet because it is scary and it's moved so fast and changed so fast and it's it's changed everything. But in terms of connecting with like-minded people, it's amazing. Like, it's so cool. Yeah, it so is. It so is. And like, yeah, you find people that you would never, probably would never meet on the street. Is Like, if you had your commune and you like, you know, you stayed inside, you wouldn't meet people like that. I kind of, my friend um, always talks about it as like collecting like little gems. And like, I feel quite similar yeah. in the way that I make my friendships in that I like don't, make friends with like big groups I like really find people like the one person in the group that I really really like and then I like like disconnect them from the pack and then I like zoom in but like an orca um I feel like that's one of the reasons why like like for instance even living in London like you're surrounded by so many amazing people and you like have access to these like brilliant minds and super inspiring people and as I get older like and also like in comedy and in like art scene that like, you just come across people who you're just like you leave a conversation you're like wow they are wow like what a star what an icon and how do you think how do you think comedy plays a role in female friendships and the way that we communicate with each other and I guess the way that we even like share traumas and stuff or share experiences what role do you think comedy plays in that I think it's such a huge part of it especially because like you know the the, like we basically live in a world where everyone like where men are like the funny ones and like the men in the friendships or in the friendship groups are like the guys that can joke and like I can literally like like with hands down like the women in my life are the funniest people I've ever met and like they're also I don't know I, I think that the dynamics of like making jokes and comedy in like a mixed group or when you're with boys I've always found that so tricky whereas when I'm just with like women and the women in my life and we're all just like messing around and joking it's like such a different energy it's such a like a nice like supportive like we all just get each other I find that it's easy to rely on like problematic humor when I'm around my cis straight guy friends like I I will eat and I find myself leaning into it and I don't like myself when I'm joking with the boys because it's just toxic and it's just bullshit but it's so I feel this is all very generalized by the way but like (laughs) when I'm with the girls I feel like it's very like intellectual humor you know but even if that's based on like stupid little in jokes you've got or like something that happened a year ago like it's not just put downs and it's not just being like oh so and so is um x slur or whatever like if you're with the boys which is like not even funny (laughs) yeah Yeah, it's built on like layers like it has so much much depth to it there's so much (laughs) pre-reading like the jokes that some of the jokes I make yes, with my friends the law. are like, there's, the law. there's law, there's like, it's like a joke on a joke <laughs> on a joke. And then someone will be like, what? And I'm like, girl, like, I can't even explain to you what this means. Like, this is so, this is so funny. To me. Like, one of the best, ex- like, I would say like, also one of the things I've always bring up is that like, one of my, my favorite female friendships that I have is with my sister, which I like, I always, I was going to say about like tropes and films and TV that the thing I hate is that like people always have a really bad relationship with their sister. Yeah, it's always problematic and it's always jealous and it's like always yeah. very toxic, but it makes for good drama in TV. It does. But, it makes for great TV. Yeah, I feel it similarly with my brother and I feel like we never really got along through our childhood, but he just came and stayed with me in London. We had the best oh. time. We've got the exact same sense of humour. I'm like... We get each other yeah. now. Like this is so fun. Like I, I love having my brother. And when he left, like I teared up, which I never usually do. We just had the best time, and I was like, oh my god, I'm so lucky that I have 
this awesome friendship with my brother now where we know each other on an adult level and it's just so cool it's and so it's, cool. yeah you're so right it's like the the brother sister trope is is and the sister sister trope it can be quite negative in in pop culture it's so negative but like the, they're like she she's like such an important woman in my life like she's such a like I love that I can I can have a fr- like you say like a friendship with her and she also I feel like because you're your sibling is the only person that really knows like everything Mm -hmm. and that they like understand Mm -hmm. but like I love having a teammate when we go home like as much as I love my parents like there's nothing like it's so fun they understand everything (laughs) like someone was asking I can't remember who this was but one of my sister's friends was asking us about like meeting our parents and she was like I like I really I'm so excited to meet them and I was like yeah like yeah they're great but like you know there's like there's layers and then my sister just gave me there's, a look and I was like yeah there's, law. there's so much <laughs> law. Like, it's so funny that you say that and it's like um I was reading this book called uh I've actually got it here it's called Conversation on Conversations on Love by Natasha Lyon and there's one chapter about um sibling love and basically it's it's just highlighting the point that your sibling is the only person there in your life that is there basically from your birth or their birth up until when you pass away if you both live to like an old age. So like your friends come in at different points in your life, whether that's like age 10 or age 30 and your parents leave kind of halfway, your dog's there for a little bit, but like your sibling is the only person that is there from like the start to the end. So they know everything. Like they're there for the whole journey. Yeah. How cool is that? Which, and we don't celebrate that enough. Like that's amazing. And and like yeah. you just have this person also on tap who like is like ha- yeah. has to be your friend. Like I love that. So Obviously, true. I don't wanna, like, and they have to agree with you. Yeah. They have to agree with you on stuff. Like you tell them your side of the story about like a fight with a friend and they're like, yeah, but like obviously you're in the right. And you're like, <laughs> right obviously I am that is also something about like female friendships where I'm like when I tell a boy yeah. something they'll be like yeah so, like either it's something that's really sad and they'll just be like yeah that sounds that sounds sad and I'm like that's yeah. so helpful or like it's something where I like obviously <laughs> want them to be like this is like this I'm not in the wrong I'm the hero of the story tell me I'm right and yeah. all of your female friends will be like you're the hero you're not the problem and they'll just be like yeah no it sounds like you might have like I don't know. So it seems complicated. Yeah. It's like, I need you to weigh in right now. I'd like you're just like I find that so frustrating. It's so funny, and it's when like you're if you're talking to a guy as well about like texting a boy or like guy problems and stuff. They're just like. Uh, he's probably just like doesn't like you very much when all the girls will be like obviously he's busy yeah. and that's why he <laughs> yeah. just didn't reply and he also likes you so much that he just is too scared he's to too reply scared. He's, that's why yeah, he's completely like <laughs> he's terrified of you like yeah just lie to me <laughs> tell like, me what I want I like hear. it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so good. And um, I know that in Clementine, just from what I've seen, it there, like you said, that it is based a little bit in history. Yeah. And you mentioned to me as well that you have an interest in history. So I'd love to know how you think the concept of female friendships has changed throughout history. And you can go back as far as you like. Bring it back I to the 90s. This. Sex in the City. Yeah, Sex in the City. Yeah. Pop culture references. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say? I don't know. Like, it, I, I actually was was thinking about this one and I think it is kind of similar to what I was saying before about how like I think that in our like in our world in like the modern world we are like so um isolated as single women and I think like financially uh like socially I think you know we kind of look at the western world as this like peak of development and look at how you know how women are like so um so kind of free and in comparison to like lots of places that is true like there are loads of opportunities but I also do think that the things that used to make us powerful in in a much more patriarchal system um where are where are connections to the women in our life like women used to be in like economic marriages who with husbands that they basically barely saw but the people that they saw every day were like these kind of band of women and like I I think whenever I because I studied history as well and like whenever I look back at that when I think about these like communities that used to exist and I think people talk in general about how we we have less community but I think that the thing that we've lost specifically as women is that like that really powerful access to like information to to like love to connection to support like it would have that would have been the way that those women like thrive like that's how like those like gossip networks those 
um, you know, the, the mothers that they, their like mums and their daughters and friends would all kind of live together. And I think that we've, I don't know, we've really lost that. And I, I, I wish that I, I had like a solution for it because for instance like I don't know if you find this in London like I've got some amazing friends but like even just finding like time between our schedules to see them it's like I catch them for like an hour or two for dinner and then I'm like I might not see them for another month because everyone's just so busy it's squeezing it in rather than prioritizing it it's more like fitting it around the puzzle of your life and not making it a focus whereas like it probably used to be more of a like fitting everything else around those relationships yeah like and it used to be like your life blood kind of and you yeah used to, I don't know like I, I I really miss that thing that you had at school or like at uni where you kind of didn't have to plan anything with your friends because you knew you'd probably see each other every day and like yeah the, that was that so was good so nice. like you just know and you don't have to be like and I, I know I, I grew up in an era I didn't have a phone till I was probably 17 and even then it was my my ex-boyfriend's like old iPhone one like it was shit and I had no credit or texting like ability so like I wouldn't even bother like I went through the MSN phase like talking to people as soon as you get home from school but proper conversations were all had in real life and like emotions were felt in real life people told each other when they were cross or angry rather than texting it it was it was like I guess in the same way that people grieve or mourn romantic relationships being primarily online in a lot of ways rather than you know like people say I love you to their partner for the first time over text nowadays that's like, crazy to me. that to me is crazy like that's baffling because that is such a pivotal life moment and it may it's such a f- physical feeling that you're sharing with someone like I would strictly do that in real life but I feel like a lot of younger people and Gen Z especially maybe they don't have the tools or the toolkit from growing up and doing that in real life maybe they're not comfortable enough but whereas for me that is just so upsetting I heard this thing once which was like um you when you're talking to someone online like you're not actually talking to them you're talking to like the version of them that you have in your head so like when they respond they respond as the version of them so like for instance if you're really angry at them like just for whatever reason and then they send a message like that's not them that's like the voice that you have in your head as them in that particular moment and I think when I heard that I was like that's so true I guess it's like I have a voice in my head of how I read tweets and memes and in my head it's so <laughs> funny and then I might like be laying next to a friend like I was laying next to my friend Harriet last night and I read her out this tweet and it sounded different when I said it out loud and it wasn't even that funny and I was like oh in my head that was like really funny and I read it out and I was like that was not even funny so it's like the th- what is going on in your head is so different to reality so, yeah. like you and it's like when you paint a picture of someone who, like, I've had this thing for this guy for like a year, right? And I know that we would be bad together. I don't even like him that much. I'm not even that attracted to him. He's not funny. He's not smart. He's not even nice to me. And we actually never even talk. So it's like, Slay. why <laughs> do I still ha- get excited when he watches my Insta story? No, for what reason? No. But like, tell me why. I've created a six part ITV <laughs> drama with me and him in my own head that I watch and repeat and I'm like that is so stupid it's just like isn't it insane (laughs) like this weird thing that is in my head it's insane behavior and I'm going to speak to my therapist about it but like absolutely wild I love it though like that's what makes women amazing like the fact that we can be given a glass (laughs) and then like they I'm like married to them like I I remember I watched like I was I work in children's TV and I was like oh my god it was actually so bad there was a guy who was like a cameraman and I was like okay yeah like it's on you know what I mean like it's on and and, and like we didn't say anything we didn't even <laughs> barely even looked at each other and I remember like we were there for like three days filming and then I got in the car back and my colleague turned to me and she was like so like did you talk to him and I was like no but I realized like we probably wouldn't it would never work because like and then went into this really in-depth description about like the fact that he was always traveling like he's clearly older like maybe he wants something different in his life oh. and about how like I couldn't I couldn't be with someone who was like in a production team because like our schedules would always clash <laughs> and she was like it's like you that know- is crazy like you're it's insane you know- <laughs> and I was like and like you've just assumed so much as well, yes. like without even asking. But as long as it controls the narrative that we want to hear, I will That's create fine. it. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> like I just, I, I also think that men must be so 
stressed when they hear these kind of things because they're like oh my god I feel like yeah. they can only <laughs> think about one thing at one time whereas I'm like building <laughs> narratives about like multiple things all at once like yeah. I'm like at the back of my mind here I'm like married to Charles de Klerk and at the front of my mind here I'm like I'm like thinking about I don't know I'm like married to five different people in my head which is actually honestly crazy. and they'll be like guys that and like you could just they'll say one thing and you'll be like well guess he doesn't want kids so yes. guess we can't do it and he'll be like I don't like edamame beans and you're like oh great it'll so you, yeah it'll never work because you clearly hate kids like it's so funny some because, like, story you made we up are in the so, end. we are so perceptive but I also <laughs> yeah. sometimes I think that that goes to my head and I'm like like Same. they'll say something and I'm like there's a trauma there that hasn't been unlocked yeah. and I'm like and then I leave I'm like I definitely don't know that for sure. like, where no, they'll be like that? I don't like strawberry laces and you're like wow you really need to unpick that yeah you need to pick, <laughs> yeah. unpick whatever going on there the hell. Yeah. <laughs> clearly not ready for a relationship yeah <laughs> so funny Oh God. And um, one of my last questions is what is one thing that you would change about your female friendships if you could? Because I, I know for me, it'd be what we spoke about in regards to prioritizing them more than other things in my life and probably as much as romantic relationships. But what would you say in regards to that? Yeah, I think that's so true. Like, I think that that's the thing I find the hardest is the fact that like we don't par- like we don't prioritize it like we do with romantic yeah. relationships, which is crazy because as we've just said, like it's mad that we put all of our like all of our needs into this guy who can who can literally only think of one thing at once, and then when they aren't able to like you know be the the sixth best friends that we have, we're like sharks, and I I always think that like especially after like having been single for quite like a while now that I've realized how strong those connections are and I've realized how important it is to like and how difficult it'd be to find someone that matches any of those people and any of those Uh like emotional like kind of connections that we have because like your connections with men are just quite different um yeah but I think that the thing I probably the thing I would probably change is that there were some of my friends I don't know if you have this as well but where their entire life has kind of become their partner, which is like a mm-hmm. phase we all go through. Yeah, but yeah. I find it sometimes difficult as a woman to like, or as like a female friend, to like compete with the guy and the like the 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 boyfriend because it's like I don't know if you've ever had this, but like it, you're kind of like trying to make friends with like trying to make uh, plans with someone, and then they'll be like, "Oh, I'm away that weekend," and it's like, "Oh, where are you?" And they're like, "Oh, I'm, I'm at Matt's." And then it will be like the most irrelevant like connection to them ever. It'll be like, oh, I'm at Matt's best friend's brother's like priest's football game. And it's like, <laughs> why do you ha- why do you have to go to that? And it's like, oh, yeah, Matt can't wants you just you there. come? I have out to me. go. And it's like you have yeah. to go to Matt's brother's best friend's priest. And it's like priest all of these party, really yeah. ridiculous things. It'll be something like um. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a week, so I can't do tonight because we're going to hang out. But it's like you see him every Every day. day. Yeah, you live together. You live together. It's so intense. I'm like, I don't in the same bed. (laughs) (laughs) I I find that so like tricky, and I also because I think sometimes it's with people who are like in in earlier relationships or like one of their first relationships. I think once you've been burned, you realize that you cannot burn your bridges, even if you're with someone. You're like, I ain't never gonna burn those bridges down again. But I know it's also like when people are in in love, they're like they can't see beyond it, and you're like, oh, the horse blinkers are on. They're on there. They're on it. Like, so I I probably changed that. Like, I hate having to compete with the boys, and I also don't like the fact that this might be a bit harsh, but where like the boyfriends come along to everything. Oh, I don't like that. That's annoying. Like, if guys are like, oh, like, I've heard of some people that bring their boyfriend on a hen do. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I would not want my boyfriend there because how are you meant to cheat on them if they're there? No, I'm joking. It's like, like seriously, like toddler to what? Like, and they definitely look like they want to be there. They're always miserable sat in the corner. It's like, why did you bring them? They clearly don't want to be here. And then I'm sat there talking about like Bitcoin or something. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I had an ex who um, we kind of, I think, realized at one point, we ended, we obviously broke up, so maybe this wasn't good, but he'd have his footy <laughs> events and, like, he'd always be like, come to this footy event, like, all the boys will be there, it'll be really fun. I was like, I 
I want to go for you, but like you just don't really need me there. Like yeah. you're going to have a great time. You're going to talk to all the boys. It's going to be amazing. And he's like, but all like the other girlfriends will go. And I'm like, oh. yeah, but like they don't want to go either. Like just yeah. have boys night. I don't care. Do your Please. thing. That's, that is weird. The like girlfriends having to like all like be a girlfriend block. That's weird. I always find that really strange that then like the boys the boys have to hang out and then the girls have to, I find that strange. And then you have to make friends with people yeah. that you probably don't really like. And then you're like- And you have nothing in common with, it's like being a wag, but you're not even famous or rich. You just have to like <laughs> hang out with random- <laughs> So true. You just want you <laughs> someone in it, like clap a comment, like literally. Yeah, genuinely. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, this has been so much fun. And thank yeah. you so much, Rosalie, for coming on the podcast. I absolutely loved having you. No, thank you for having me. I'm- I hope you enjoyed my chat with Rosalie. Please let me know on my Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, wherever, if you have any stories or thoughts of your own to share. Peace. Peace.